G'day everybody, welcome to the XJIT channel. Yes, I know it's my RC model reviews bench, but I've got something, a treat, a special for you today. This is a memory board. Now, this is a little bit of one of my nostalgia trips back in time. Should have put it on my new old man channel perhaps, but I want to put it on XJIT. I've put my other memory videos, my old computer stuff videos on XJIT. People seem to like them. Last one was that software I wrote way back in 1983 or something. Anyway, this goes back even further i'm not sure how far back this goes but oh hang on i can probably tell actually because i've got a chip here i'll see if i can read the memory code on the chip okay the chips for this thing were made in 1978 1978 that's a long time ago hang what's that that's like um 30 40 years ago 40 years ago almost half a century ago this memory board uh came out on the market it is the advanced computing products logos one and i'm going to let you think have a guess for a moment let's see how big that board is right see how big, um, have a guess how much memory this board can store when it's fully completed i hope this was a kit just to fill you in this was a kit set you could buy this as a kit and build it yourself and so you had to populate all the little component bits and things like this one all that's happened with this has been a few i picked it up second hand it's been a few ic sockets and these are the really crappy ones these are the crappy crappy ic sockets which are just a big strip and you just cut them and solder them in so they're really awful they're not even gold plated so you get all sorts of funny things happening with high resistance on those which is one of the reasons i never completed this because it was just going to be a, a mountain of trouble this board with these crappy sockets i could have desoldered these and soldered the chip straight in but oh, so much desoldering um, couldn't be bothered but let's have a guess how much memory we're going to get if we fully populate that board any bids actually what you can do now if you want to pause the video go down to the comments and type in your answer but um, be, be fair, you know, I mean, um, don't wait until the end of the video till you know and then do it because, just to look smart. Just do it now because I want to see how many people really have a feel for how much memory has changed in terms of size, in terms of cost, and in terms of performance, even. So, there you go. Right, how much memory would that board hold? Here's my hand for a frame of reference. It is huge, this board is massive, right? Okay, right, moving right along. Um, this board can hold eight k bytes that's right not eight megabytes not eight gigabytes eight thousand bytes that's all and let's do a little bit of, of comparison here that's the eight the eight k byte board and here's a 16 gigabyte micro sd card this card has two million times as much storage as that honestly in the in the period of 40 years two million times the storage that that has in a period of just what is it um 40 years now let's look at the price as well the the board you see there was populated with uh, chips that we call they were 21 l02 the l just meant low power here's one of those chips now have a guess how much one of those chips can hold and there's our 16 gigabyte micro sd i'll just pull in a bit so you can have a closer look there's the side by side comparison and uh, as i say this actually this chip here actually holds 1k bits which means 128 bytes of memory just 128 bytes that's a couple of lines on your computer screen basically just a couple of lines of text will fit in that screen uh, fit in that chip this is a 16 gigabyte micro sd card two million times the storage uh, so have a guess what these things cost way back in 1978 well they were two bucks a pop <laughs> honestly two dollars per chip and this board required 64 of them so this board just the memory chips alone came to 128 dollars just for the memory chips and this is 1978 dollars when dollars were worth something so uh, this i think for this micro sd card i think i paid about 10 bucks maybe 15 dollars i'm not too sure can't remember so 15 dollars for eight gigabytes 100 was it 100 well no in this chip two dollars for 128 bytes oh that's unbelievable so this has two million times the storage and if we do that if we do the sums if you were to try and build an eight gigabyte uh, memory board using these chips back in 1978 it would have cost you 32 million dollars 32 million bucks to get one of these 15 dollar card well, same storage as one of these 15 dollar cards unbelievable it's gobsmacking how far we've come such a very short time and of course now i see that uh, was it sandisk have just announced they've got a 400 gigabyte micro sd card 400 gigabytes are you fooling me really seriously that's a lot of storage and worth also noting this chip has an access time of 450 nanoseconds so it's really really slow the memory in those these days was like so super slow but it didn't matter because processes were not fast either so you weren't missing out on anything so 
Yeah, well, let's take a little bit more of a look at the instructions and things on this kit. Hopefully this will show up okay on the video, but this is what you get. This is the, the instructions to the kit. And it says this is fully Altair MSI Poly 88 compatible, because those were the computers of the era back in the 1970s. You know, Altair was the big name. Um, MSI was another one and Poly 88, not so much, I didn't see many of those, but the, the, the Altair 8808 was the machine that really kicked the whole thing off. And this was a memory board you could plug into it. It says 500 nanoseconds access times, allows the board to run at full speed. Ooh, um, fully, truly fully buffered. <laughs> this was written by geeks. The, the, this manual was written by geeks. Truly fully buffered, address lines, data out and data in lines. Addressing circuitry allows placement of board at any 1K boundary. Uh, this feature is dip switch selectable. Hardware memory protect circuit features protection of board as one 8K byte block or two 4K byte blocks. Four 2K blocks, eight 1K blocks, 16 512 byte blocks or 32 250 site blocks. I mean, what you could do is actually protect a piece of memory so that you didn't accidentally write over it. And that was quite useful sometimes in a development environment. And it's got a battery backup circuit on board. Now this is interesting. Um, the the, flat, the, the micro SD cards, you know, you put them in your device, you record to them, then you pull them out and they remember it. You know, the, it's, uh, it's not like your PC when you turn the power off and it forgets what it was doing. These things have got flash or NAND, NAND flash memory and they remember what you've stored on them for many, many, many years, possibly, you know, decades, we don't know. Um, but these chips, as soon as you take the power off those, they forget everything, you know, instant amnesia. So what they've done with this board is they put a, a battery backup on there so that you can... Um, keep the chip powered up enough to retain its memory. <laughs> now the interesting thing is that, um, let's go to the circuit uh, diagram for this, or the, the comments on this, because it's unbelievable. Um, let's go through here, These are the that's the components list, you see you take them off, make sure you got them in the box. Here's the battery backup setup, there's a little circuit diagram, a battery, two batteries in fact, and off to the rest of the schematic. schematic. Um, it says here, Place batteries in series as follows. Note switch is required to prevent battery drain when memory is off and backup is not required. Approximate current drain is one amp. Honestly, one amp? Just to hold the memory? How long would that last? I mean, you're looking, you know, minutes or hours. Not a great deal of time. So the battery backup was, mm, I guess if you're working on something, because in those days, we didn't have disk drives. We just had to key things in through the front panel. So if you'd spent like eight hours manually keying in a program and you didn't want to lose it but you wanted to turn the computer off and go to bed you could leave the battery back up on and if you had yourself a 12 ampere hour battery when you woke up in the morning the memory would still be there you could turn the computer back on and carry on where you left off why you wouldn't just leave the computer going i don't know but i mean hey you know that's uh, designed by geeks for geeks so that's what you get now let's keep moving through the thing here here's the schematic look at that you don't get that much these days do you so and it's all been hand drawn, hand drawn with um, BiroCAD, and there we go, 8K static memory. That's that. Then here we have the the matrix of the memory array. So each of these little squares is one of those little chips that I showed you, one of these little 1K bit memory chips. And that's why you need 64 of them to get you 8K bytes. And look at it all. So there's a huge component count on this board. Over here we've got some more highly valuable information because a lot of this is dip switch settable. There's dip switches on the board which enable you to configure how the memory looks, the memory boundaries and the size of the blocks and all sorts of things. So that's pretty useful. And then of course down here there's the parts list. We already have one of those. I don't know why they give it to you twice. But that's it. That's what you got for your money. And I suspect given that these chips total $128, this was probably a, this board was probably a couple of hundred bucks, maybe more, um, to buy this board and get your 8K of memory. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, the quality of the board is quite nice. I mean, the, the silk screen, everything is pretty, you know, fine and dandy. Just as I say, these, these sockets, useless, totally useless. Um, yeah, so back in the day, this is what we had to do when we wanted to get some more memory for our computer. And I hope it gives you some insight into, you know, just how lucky we are these days. You can buy a PC with, you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM and still have change left over for a coffee at lunchtime. These, back in these days, man, it, it cost a fortune. I must use the inflation calculator. I'll look it up on the inflation calculator and tell you how much this 8K of memory cost in today's dollars, given that these were $2 each, these chips, back in 78. You might be surprised. I'll probably be surprised as well. But there you go. Now, um, I've got other stuff laying around here, stuff from the dim distant past, which I will haul out. But if you've got comments on this, if you had one of these boards and you built it and used it, I'd be very surprised. But if you did, tell us about it. Um, I'm very keen to hear from people who were also involved in computers at this time of the, the evolution of, of the microcomputer product. Wearing my old man cap, I have to say that this was a really exciting time 
in the history of technology. Things had never changed so quickly. Once they brought the microcomputer chip out, the microprocessor chip out, it was just fantastically fast change paced innovation. I, I, just, think, just thinking of it while I remember, um, I just started watching a series called Halt and Catch Fire on AMC. Well, I'm watching it over the internet, of course, but um, that's a brilliant series. It was quite amazing that it, um, it shows quite well the the entrepreneurial flair and the way that people actually got off their bums and did stuff and how many technology projects came out of garages and things. Really excellent series up to the fourth series now. I think it's still screening in its fourth series. So if you feel inclined, go and watch that if you've got access to it. And I'm sure you know how to get access if you use the interwebs. There you go. Right, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. There'll be more like this to come. Should I put them on the XJet channel or on the Old Man channel? What do you think? What do you reckon? Thanks for watching. Bye for now.